On Mondays, I tend to be working as a GP. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays, I work at the University of Leeds as a researcher. And Fridays, I tend to keep to myself and have the day off, but I tend to use that day to work on my designing and uh, knitting. Yes, I like to keep busy. <laughs> My nan taught me when I was younger, I used to go and stay with her for a weekend and at some point during the weekend she'd get out the knitting needles or the crochet hook and insist on trying to teach me and I was quite resistant back then but I used to give it a go with lots of holes and mistakes. But then when I got older, going to high school, going to university, I just stopped. And really went sort of until my late 20s without doing any sort of craft and I decided that I was missing something and then I happened to go to a coffee shop and there was a knitting group meeting and there's lots of ladies sitting around chatting looking like they're having quite a good time at the same time as knitting and I just thought actually I, I fancy sort of picking up the needles again so I brought myself a how to knit book and very quickly realized that I could remember most of it from my childhood and began knitting again from there. I love all the colours, the bright, I mean, this wall behind me is what inspires me, sort of like just the bright colours and the sort of, it feels quite, I don't know, just a cheerful thing to do when you have something beautiful at the end of it as well. I had an idea for a top and I tried to find a pattern that would enable me to sort of get the look I wanted and couldn't find anything, so I ended up designing my own and that's really how I got into designing business sort of grew from there really sort of with ideas to publish books and themes patterns and uh, kits and things as well. I mean I made a decision to go down to 0.8 full-time equivalent. I'd made that decision after my mum died um, and she died quite young before she reached retirement age and my father had just been diagnosed with terminal cancer at the same time and I thought you can't guarantee that you're going to live to old age and have a retirement to enjoy so I decided that if you want to do something and you really do enjoy it, you just need to make time for it. You've got to prioritise. It teaches you sort of patience, perseverance. Um, I love the problem solving aspect of it. A lot of what it involves is actually really similar to what I do in research. It's taking sort of numbers, spreadsheets, and trying to write things in a way that other people can understand, um, which to me is very similar to being a GP, where you're trying to explain maybe a disease to someone who doesn't know the technical language and you've got to try and explain it in language that they can understand. Same with research, you're trying to sometimes explain it so that patients and public can understand what research that you're going to do and then when you're writing a knitting pattern you want the general public to be able to follow that pattern and be able to create something. My way of balancing it is to set aside days, so my clinical day I focus purely on the clinical, so I'm a GP and I find that allows me to get into the work and actually achieve quite a lot in those days. The challenges are you still need to be flexible. So there are some days where deadlines happen or um, surgery is really busy and you need to be flexible enough to be able to adjust. My tip would be just to do what you love if you've got to be able to enjoy it all along the way because that's the most important thing. It's uh, feeling happy and satisfied at the end of the week that you achieve something that you really enjoy and has benefited others as well. <laughs>